Greeting from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Friday, January 24, 2020. It is major, major, maybe major, major, major milestone day for the 1956 17 foot Chris Craft Special Sportsman. Her bottom is completely reconstructed. We saved it. You remember, this is the boat that languished under a tree right side up for 40 years. When she came to us, all of her planking in this section was just completely shot and rotted. The keel from about that can of uh, 3M Marine Premium Filler to here was rotted. You could actually take handfuls of, of, of what used to be wood out. The outside of the keel totally rotted. The stem and knee totally rotted. All of these frames beneath the plywood in here totally rotted. But her owner whose dad originally purchased this boat and then sold it sometime, uh, well, sometime beyond 40 years ago, couldn't get the memories of water skiing behind dad's Chris Craft out of his mind. He invested a decade and finally found her and bought her and hoped against hope that we could save her. Well, she saved because while there's still issues on the top sides and the transom and the decks may have to be replanked uh, to look presentable again, she is a solid, ready to float hull once more. So I thought it'd be interesting before we initiate the priming to go through some of the steps that led us to this true 5200 bottom. You'll remember we took the outer planks off, the inner planks off, right down to the frames, brought every frame back. All the frames have been bathed in clear penetrating epoxy sealer. They've all been uh, heavily coated with Chris Craft mahogany bilge paint from Sandusky Paint Company in Sandusky, Ohio. We then bedded four millimeter Aquatech Maranti marine plywood to the frames and allowed that to clear, but a uh, cure. But at every step, everything got flooded with CPES. Flooded and then flooded again and then what the hell, let's flood it one more time. Once that CPS had cleared, we buttered the, the entire surface and you can look at previous videos to see how we did it. Plank by plank, we screwed them down. Oh, but of course those planks had been flooded on both sides, both edges, over and over and over again with CPES. We got them down, everything was down tight. Three more coats of CPES. We then reached for our go-to fairing compound, 3M premium filler, excuse me, 3M marine premium filler. The people at Jamestown scolded me for leaving marine out that screwed up their search engine. And I, this is, uh, Premium filler 46006. Don't forget to buy a tube of hardener, at least one, possibly two. We usually buy two for every gallon. With that, we started working through the countersinks. Um, what you have to go by two, three times, three times, three, t three passes. The, the first pass is kind of ugly. You just sort of get it on there. Uh, we use a, 
a plastic spreader to do it. I try to do it with a putty knife and I keep getting handed the plastic spreader. Sand it, put another coat on, sand it, put a third uh, pass filling all the countersinks and at that point uh, Joe and Anthony went at it with uh, 80 grit sandpaper to get it to get it all absolutely fair. And I think you know what happened then. Yep, another flood of CPES. That has now cured. We're ready to go. We're good to go. It's time to apply the barrier coat. Interlux Interprotect 2000E produces something akin to a thatched roof of micro platelets that, that interlock. We do not enjoy applying this stuff. You might as well be applying a heavy consistency of warm butter. Uh, it just doesn't want to lay out, but the problem is you also do not want to put heavy coats on. If you put heavy coats of this stuff on, it will not cure and produce the barrier coat that you want. So, beware, you want to take your foam roller and really roll the paint out. And the first coat's not going to cover very much. You're going to see a lot of ghosting through. You'll still see some on the second coat. But you must, you must, you must apply five coats of this. Don't apply five coats, then you've just wasted a whole lot of money. This stuff's expensive. You need five coats to get the film thickness that will protect this bottom in perpetuity. Once We've applied the five coats and we'll alternate the first coat. I think the guys are mixing up white at this point. And uh, we'll go white, gray, white, gray, white. The reason for that is by changing colors, it's really easy to, to spy uh, holidays as you roll this stuff out. The white will just show right through the gray in any place where it's too thin. Once we have five coats of this on and we have the shop today at about 66 degrees, we'll apply a coat now. We're in the early afternoon. Uh, we really usually need five hours, but you've got to recoat within 12 hours or you have to sand it. And you really don't want to sand it. So our, our periodicity is about every five hours until we have the five coats on. Once that's done, then we'll reach for a gallon of Sandusky uh, copper bronze hard racing bottom paint. That paint is not for a boat that's going to sit in the water and destroy itself all year. Those of you who set your boats in the water all year, well, it's your choice. It, those boats weigh 50% more in the fall than they did when you launched them in the spring. And the rot's beginning, and the rot's growing. But be that as it may, then we apply three coats of the hard racing copper bronze bottom paint. And at that point, we have her ready to flip and ready to work on elsewhere. And in that connection, today we will only be priming down to the actual chine. Right, right to this edge. Why aren't we going down the chine plank? And continuing all the way to the top of the water line? That's because we have fabricated on each side a new chine plank. This, this right here is an original 
chine plank, it's fine. It, it will need some filler at some point, but it's, the rest of the top sides are still in quite sorry condition, mostly cosmetically, but we have to remove every one of those fasteners. These planks have to be released. And you'll see that right now, because of how much this plank has shrunk over the years, we're faced with a, with a, a real space. So when we do the top sides, or when the owner uh, restores the top sides, if he chooses to take that on, these planks will be released, all of them, and then we'll restack them so that they're these seams are absolutely tight. We'll be able to repair any issues. And the last, or if you had the boat right side up, the top plank will likely refabricate a little bit wider so that it fits in there nice and snugly. So, we'll take a break for a moment while the 2000E goes through its 15 minute dwell time. Don't skimp on that, don't get in a hurry. I know you want to make all this ugly wood and fairing compound and uh, 5200 in the seams go away. It'll go away soon enough, let it dwell. And in that connection, you've heard us lecture and lecture against trying to caulk seams with 5200 because it gets super hard, will not compress any longer, and leads to cupping and breaking and, and dest destruction of the uh, planks on either side. It also fails. and. We've, I don't know how many videos we've shared with you where one of us is just pulling strings of this stuff out. Why not here? Well, here we have a monolith. Remember, the underside was completely buttered, and in our case, that layer is an eighth of an inch thick before everything gets screwed down. We get squeeze out all along here that we clean, but unlike just paying it, into the seams of a, a, a traditional bottom where on the hull side of these planks, on the, excuse me, on the build side, you just got it laying against wood, dirty, old, rotten, probably greasy, ugly wood. It never adheres there and that allows it to release. In this case, it's continuous. This 5200 is part of the the layer that's beneath this seam, it spreads to the next one. You play hell getting this apart. So having the 5200 squeeze out here is a good thing. Uh, besides, we've got so much CPES in it, these, it, these poor planks uh, have become uh, monoliths themselves. They're just not going to move. They're not going to absorb water. So let's Take a look at how we apply this stuff to the 56 Chris Craft Special Sportsman. So we've let the uh, 2000E dwell, and Joe corrected me. The dwell time is stipulated as 20 minutes, not 15 minutes. So correction made. Dwell time is 20 minutes, and We'll let Joe get started here, and I'll let him take it away as he paints. Yeah, this stuff, it, if it's almost like a melted down fluff to try to get it across everything and get it to uniformly out nice. But we use, this is a 12 inch roller, but I mean, if you got two guys, you can use the nine inch rollers, whatever works best, but. When you're doing it by yourself and you don't have much time, a 12 inch roller, you can get it all down really quick and you can get it uh, really even out 
a lot better. Yeah, and it's tough to get it into those seams, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. That's when the multiple coats really, really eat shit. You need a good five coats. You kind of just work it around as much as you can, get it into the voids. If you need to, you can always take a foamy, which I'm probably going to end up doing, and go down through the seams where there's uh, some voids that the roller just can't quite reach. You want to grab a foamy and fill seams behind yeah. me and I'll just keep rolling? Absolutely. Left-handed roller, though. <laughs> and what we're not videotaping is that. After we do this side, somebody gets to climb up on the back of the boat and reach the keel. What a transformation, huh? All the chicken pox are gone. It's all one nice uniform color. Our next coat will be gray. So we'll let Joe and Anthony keep applying the Interlux Interprotect 2000 E barrier coat primer, epoxy primer, to the bottom of our 1956 17 foot Chris Craft Special Sportsman. The next time you see her, she's going to be hard racing copper bronze and ready to flip. Thank you so much. Bye bye for now from Snake Mountain Boatworks. <laughs>